What's going on, guys? We're checking out a new van today. Check this out. Um, right behind me is Overland Van Projects van. New, new, or spec van, or whatever the heck you want to yeah, call marketing it. marketing van, yeah. Marketing van, yeah. I love that. This is Dustin, he is the owner, CEO of Overland Van Project, and he has another company we're gonna talk about. Yeah, Overland Energy Co. Yeah. Overland Energy Company. He's got two companies running them simultaneously. Love it. Guys, check him out at what he does, but we are going to get him on camera. He is going to walk us through his spec van. Is You just called it a marketing van. Yep. Super excited to see this because I've been waiting about six weeks to tour this thing. This thing's gonna be awesome. How's What's going, up, man? Dustin? How are you, man? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, man. I'm glad you came out. Yeah, dude. Uh, I've been uh, trying to finish this thing for you for a while. Uh, you have been. Um, when I first got to Portland, uh, you were telling me you actually didn't. This was empty. Yeah. This was a complete empty, you brand new. And you were like, you told me that you were going to be doing this as a uh, as your marketing van for shows and whatnot. Yep. What is it? What is the van? So it's a 144 4x4 diesel uh, sprinter, high roof. It is 4x4. And it is 4x4, yeah. And so we actually, if you want to look at the outside here, we've got uh, yeah. the biggest tires that you can actually fit. If you look right here, the door. The oh, door you are, you are tight. Yeah. But you got it. Watch this. Come over here. Watch this. <laughs> oh, you just missed it. Hey, but it works, right? Yeah, it works. And uh, we actually took it up to Paulina Peak to make sure there weren't any squeaks or rattles and make sure it did well on the on the dirt. Man, it did great. Having these big tires was game changer. What are, do you know the tire size? These are a uh, 33, 33 inch tire. So oh, 285, 70, 17. And I wouldn't recommend going any bigger than that. I know some people have done it, but I didn't do a lift kit on this. I only did sumo springs. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the sumo springs, like compared to like Fox shocks, what is the really difference there? So the sumo springs are going to help with your body sway. Okay. Over cross axle humps. They're going to help with any crosswind and they're going to smooth out your ride a little bit. And it's also going to help with any rear sag from that. Like if you have a heavy load in there, Yeah. it's going to help with the sag in the rear. But I already know this, but your weight isn't even that much. Yeah. Your weight, you, you went, you're like probably a thousand under, I think. Yeah. So oh. no, we're, we're good on weight, but even so, I love the Sumo Springs just because they, they help with all of that body roll. Nice. We ended up doing the Backwoods Bumper, the burliest bumper on the market, and the Warren Winch. Came with the Pathfinder lighting here, got the shackles with it. This, that winch can pull this no problem. Yes, no problem. Yeah, 10,000 pound winch, Whew. not an issue at all. It's a little overcast, so that's like, ooh, that works, ooh, that's pretty. You got them all too, you got them down here yeah. on, on the bumper so this itself. This bumper actually replaces the stock running lights. Oh, nice. Um, so you gotta put those on. And some people make them amber so you can drive with them while you're, while did, you're on the actual road. Does that mess with the sensors? Because I know these 2019s come with pretty much 360 sensors. It does. The backwards bumper, I think, is the only bumper that actually is able to take care of all those sensors and the camera. Cool. This van actually doesn't have all of those sensors. Okay. The person who built this van with Keith up in Seattle, the dealership up there, he had planned on making it a full-on 4x4. So if you go this big of tires and uh -huh. you have the adaptive cruise control, it's gonna throw off a whole bunch of sensors. So nice. To get that big of tires, you gotta ditch all the all the fun toys there. Not a problem. You have an owl rig system on the back yep. that you're that you obviously know how to install. Yep. Fantastic. We actually Frankenstein this together. All the best parts from the best companies here. So we've got the owl vans tire carrier. We've got the Rome built ladder with the flatline rack. Yeah, um, you did Frankenstein this yeah, together. <laughs> you really exactly. did. I like the flatline rack because it's super low profile. Everything integrates in nicely. We've got the Fiamma automatic eagle awning on the other side that you'll see. We've got a deck integrated into it and some Zamp solar up top. How many uh, solar panels you got or how much? We just have two 45 watt solar panels. So it's okay. to keep up with the fridge, you know, keep it trickle charged. And then most of the charging comes from the alternator. Now you do have a solar company on we the do. side, we do. so you obviously know what you're doing when it comes to electrical and charging and all that stuff. Right, yeah, so we've got uh, Overland Energy Co. 240 amp hours of lithium batteries in here. Nice, and, nice. Uh, it's plenty to power everything that we've got. And we'll get to that, we'll get to that. All right, yeah, do we wanna, wanna go jump on inside and we can yeah, check sure. this out? While I'm stepping in the back, I just wanna point out guys that there is a bed that folds down right here. So I'm gonna be standing in that area and I'm gonna be talking to my man right here. Dustin, man, just give me a rundown, brother, because this looks super nice. All right, so we've got Shusugi Bon bamboo plywood as the ceiling. Now, all some the tables. people that don't know what that is, <laughs> so that is, yeah, Shusugi go ahead. Bon is a, uh, it's a Japanese wood burning technique. Uh -huh. So they use it to preserve wood and they do it on like cedar, typically on the outside of a building. And all they do is they, they burn they burn it all the way down to full char, mm -hmm. so it's completely black, and they put a little tongue oil on it, and it's good to go. We did just a light sand after we were done with some 220 grit, 
got them all finished up and we've got that kind of matching everywhere in yeah the brand. it's not an easy thing to do in woodworking but it's a very when it does come out it comes out beautifully yeah. uh but it does take a little bit of trial and error if you are new to that method just for everybody out there that wants to try it <laughs> <laughs> uh, some test pieces lots of test pieces yes we even got it here on the, on the oh slider. look at you that's pretty cool man and i love the bamboo it's super smooth it looks it looks really clean who did your uh your things these are actually van made gear. Um, okay, I've heard of this guy. He's local here in Portland. Oh, he is? Yep. I didn't know and that. Total blackout. So, we really love these things. Nice. Good insulation values. Beautiful. Awesome. You've got these ceiling strip lights. Yeah. That you put in here. So, when the lights are off, these are all on dimmers. When the lights are off, you Pretty. can actually barely tell that they're there. Pretty. Um, same thing with this over galley light here. So oh, we have it all on separate switches. When you're just checking it out, it's, um, you know, you don't even know the lights are there at first glance. Right. And then you pop them on, it's really nice. So, really love that. And then we've got the cabinet glow here as well. Oh yeah. Also on camera. Oh yeah, super nifty. Obviously one, one ceiling fan. Yep, single ceiling fan, window in the back. So you still have your cross breeze. Uh, and you don't have a window where the bed is. Or you do? I don't have a window on that side. Okay, yeah. cool. And then obviously you have a window here and you have a window on the slider as well. Yep. Talk to me about this contraption right here in front of me because yeah. this is something really cool that you did. So everyone wants to be able to, you know, seat four in their 144 and still have everything, everything else, all their other gear. So we right. really wanted to make sure that we had our dinette. My wife and I are, we don't have any kids or anything, but we've got friends who come along with us. And so we wanted to have this option. So you can still have your, your four person dinette here. You know, you've got your cup holder. Oh, look at um, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> your USB ports and everything. By the way, the driver's seat does swivel. He just didn't yep. swivel it uh, right now, but it does swivel as well. Yeah. That's and, the point of that. Uh, and then, you know, if it's just the two of you. This is where it gets cool, guys. You don't have your friends along. Just pop this down. We can get this seat uh, with, the, with the child car seat clips, with the three-point harnesses. That goes away. This goes away. Look at how much room you just created. And you're good to go. You know, without that any, is super nice. Without any interference there. I gotta say, I wasn't sold on this floor until I stepped into it. What the heck did you use on the floor? <laughs> so this is actually a pontoon boat floor. You know, it does collect a tiny bit of dirt, but it wipes off really easily. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have some rugs in here, but what's nice about it is that when you're barefoot, it's like, it's not that cold, like mm -hmm. gnarly feel. I wish I had done the van life tech system, obviously, <laughs> but- uh, Well, now that you bring it up, you are a van life tech installer. We are, yeah. Yeah, so you can do uh, van life tech, heated floor system, hot water system, if anybody wants it. Absolutely. You are, I believe the third person in Portland that is a, uh, that is an installer? Yeah. Sounds right, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Are you putting it into uh, the, the military truck? I, we might. You might? We might. Okay. I'm still trying to convince the buyer that okay. he needs it. Okay. So, All right. Uh, I mean, let's face it, he needs it. He's going to be in Montana, so he needs it. He needs it. Yeah. He needs it. Um, guys, wait until you see that video of just me driving <laughs> with him. Um, so before we move back to the back, you yeah. did some stuff to the front, actually. I did. Yeah, actually, here, this van, again, I didn't spec this van, so it came with just a single DIN stereo up here. That's right, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, it was just, you know, standard work truck singled-in stereo. So we put in the Alpine Halo, nine-inch display, all touchscreens, CarPlay, all the good stuff. And then these are our lights, those front lights. Those front lights, yeah. Yep. Cool. So I love the toggle switches. Just That's makes pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes it feel military or oh, something like that. Oh, it's so done. <laughs> um, so we threw those in here. This one we haven't hooked up yet. This is going to go to underglow. Oh, yeah. like un like underneath yeah. the whole van? Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. You come from this background. You actually started uh, your energy company before you did van building, right? Uh, it was a little bit. Of, it was in conjunction. It yeah. was in conjunction. So you actually know how to do all of the electrical for stereos and low yeah. voltage stuff, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So that's where this all came in. You were like, no, because wait until we see the back, you put in a 12 inch sub. Yeah. Because why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. And then we've got two speakers, uh, two six by nines here that face out so that you've got your sound when you're at your campsite. This can be an adventure rig. This can be, I'm going to live out of this. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want in this. Tailgater. Yeah. But again, this is, you build for customers, right? So you yes. do whatever they want. What countertops did you use? This stuff is called Rich Light. It's similar to like a paper stone. It's yeah. resin. It's recycled paper and resin. So it's super durable. This is our cutting board. 
Obviously, we've been cutting on it. Yeah, you've been using this thing, huh? Crazy durable, really easy to refinish. We actually had a whole bunch of people we were camping with, and somebody cut on this, and you can't even tell, right? That looks great. Gave it, we gave it a quick sand with 220 grit, totally back to normal. So wait a minute, you, you built this as your spec van, but yep. you've been using it. Yeah. Yeah, before it was even done, we took it out. Um, we tested everything out. These are new cabinets that, we, that we've been making. So we had to get this all dialed in and make sure that we liked how they were mounted. And we took it up some washboard to make sure they didn't rattle. Right. Everything was great. So we wanted to make sure that it was all dialed in before we before we completed it. And you said you drove it off road. You said you didn't have any rattles or squeaks or anything mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. I guess that's the difference between like companies like yourself, other companies that I tour, and then you got those big name companies that have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. I'm right. not gonna say names. Yeah, yeah. No, no, names, no names mentioned. This oh. is the feature that we're offering. Uh, I'm gonna drop the bed down into its down position. Please, first. I wanna see this, yeah. So actually- That is so nifty that it's a walkthrough. Bed's made and then this and is guy. that just a memory foam mattress? Yep. Memory foam mattress, custom upholstered. Nice. And oh, it's your toilet. So in the future, we're going to offer this as a shower. Where okay. The top, this guy opens up, shower curtain comes out. Yeah. Toilet, shower, all the above. I've had a lot of complaints about the Nature's Head toilet. If you know, if you have somebody else using your van or you loan it to a friend and they mess it up, it can get really gross. So we started using this dry flush toilet. Now this. It's kind of special. So it's by Laveo. It's a dry flush. Okay. And you use these refills. It's like a long continuous bag, kind of like a diaper genie. Okay. What happens is you do your thing, then you just push this button here and it twists it and compacts it. So you get about 15 flushes, 15 to 17 flushes. Okay. The cassettes are like seven to 10 bucks. So, you know, you end up at like 50 cents a flush. Take it out, throw it into a gas station trash can when you stop. You said you get seven? Or if it ish? Uh, you get uh, 15 flushes. 15 flushes. You can do one and two in it? Mm hmm Yep. Okay. Doesn't matter what you do. Do you do you flush every time you do a one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. You'll That's flush where it is. Okay. Do a one. Yep. And if you do a one and you're a dude, throw some toilet paper in there anyway, and that way it has something to grab. To it. absorb. Okay. I get what you're saying. Cool. Yep. And they're great. Honestly, I walked into a client's van who had bought one before I even knew about them. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I used it three weeks ago, and this was like midsummer. He's like, I went number two in there three weeks ago, and... Can't smell things. Can't smell it. Yeah. Nature's head is nine sixty thousand yeah. bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, airhead is a thousand eleven hundred, whatever and it is. It's really difficult install, but this just pops in. It just charges. So you recharge it and it lasts like two hundred flushes. So you just plug this into this wall outlet. Okay. Charge it up for a day and then the battery's fine. And then you just leave this here. What needs to charge is the mechanism to kind of twist it and yep. okay. There's a little uh, lithium battery in there that recharges. Okay. And it yeah, it'll last. That's hard. nifty, man. A super long time. And then you have all your controls. Yeah. Explain what's going on. I know I love this thing, but yeah, the Simmering, it's a great product. So we can see, you can flick through, see your batteries. See as long as you know how to calibrate it, because that thing is yeah. a pain to calibrate. <laughs> we recommend having that part professional installed. <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got how much amperage we're drawing right now. We've got the fridge on, we've got the lights on, we're pulling about 10 amps. That's nothing. Batteries at 75%. Tank is at 38%. So I've got a 20 gallon tank on board and it is a freshwater tank. And then we've got a uh, five gallon underneath gray water. So you have a five gallon gray water. How do you empty it? Is it a pull valve or? It's a pull valve. Nice. So we just drive over some nice gravel or grass that needs to be watered. We use all Dr. Bronner's soap. Yep. I love having a soap dispenser here. Yeah. Because otherwise you got to find a place for your little thing of soap. And like these are so easy to install. The inverter turn on, we actually replaced the inverter turn on switch and installed it into one of these plates so it matched. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there you've got your inverter and um, on and off. Why is it important to have an inverter switch on off? Yeah, the inverter draws like six amps. It does. It's just chilling and it depends on which inverter you get. You know, the Victrons, they draw about four. Mm -hmm. I have an Outback, which draw, or I had an Outback that had about a six amp draw, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And it's pretty standard. And some of them have a power saver mode, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you plug something into this outlet and it has to draw, it has to be like bigger than a computer mm -hmm. and it'll turn on the inverter, but it still draws even on power saver mode. Uh, do you sell uh, your custom inverters? Do you we have, don't have a custom inverters? You don't. Uh, but we do, we do recommend either Victron or Ames. Victron uh, or, or Ames. Or Xantrex. Or Xantrex. 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 Okay, cool. And cool. That's a, that's really good to know. But you can get that for customers. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what do you have your own brand in? So we have our own brand for specifically batteries. 120 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries with a built in BMS. Built in BMS. Um, again, uh, find you at the, uh, your energy company. Yeah, overlandenergyco.com. And then your van building company is. Overland Van Project. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Because I want, you know. confused there. I, yeah. it's, but it's good. I, great. I love it. Obviously, you use your own batteries and your own builds, I yeah. hope. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely.
Absolutely, all the time. 120 amp hours. That's that's a rare for lithium, so yeah. that's good. We've done up to 500 amp hours in one build. So nice. Was, uh, uh, sorry, 600 amp hours. It was five of our batteries. Five of our batteries. Gotcha. Man, that thing, we ran um, a C unit on it for like eight hours. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Back up to here, we've got our S bar heater. Oh, very good. Yep. So this is the S bar with the altitude adjustment. This is actually our awning switch. Ooh, so nifty. extends out the. It's a Fiamma Eagle, F65 Eagle, so it needs no legs to support it. Really? Yep. We're not going to be able to go all the way out because there's a van next to us. Yep. But you guys get the point. But you get the picture, and then it also has a, a wind sensor, so if you get too much wind, it's going to auto-retract. Come on! Yeah. The last couple things we have here as I retract this awning, we've got our pump. This is our hot water switch. Mm -hmm. So it's on a relay. We actually have a 110 volt hot water heater. Really? Four gallon. Really? Yep. And so this actually turns on your hot water. And then this one is your Wi-Fi. Oh, whoa. So, All right. I'm going to ask you again. Again, this is, I'm, I'm trying to educate as many people as possible yeah. during my videos. Yeah. Why is it important to have a switch for your water pump? If you don't have a switch and you're cruising down the road, so your pump's always on, mm -hmm. you know, it's very possible that something gets rattled loose, mm -hmm. springs a little leak, mm -hmm. or even this could jiggle open, hypothetically, if you're going down some really rough terrain. And then you got a big puddle of water in the back of your van. Or even worse, you know, that you see and you'll clean it up, mm -hmm. right? Even worse, you leave your van for two weeks, you take off somewhere and you come back to it and now your van is completely flooded with 20 gallons of water. If you didn't use marine grade plywood, it could soak up the, the water and start delamming everything. So just have a switch. Always have a switch. Just and always have a switch. Rule of thumb with any RV or, or van is just, you know, if you're not using something, turn it off. Right. Inverter, Wi-Fi, hot water. Awesome. Should we walk to the back? You can sure. kind of show us some goods in the back. Yeah. Just for everybody to know, it is a four by four, boom. <laughs> <laughs> You've got even, I cannot believe you fit all this into a Sprinter, and I know you're about to go to this right here, I presume. Yeah. What is this? Because it doesn't look like much, but... It, it doesn't look like much. So this is our, this is our water side. This bed, actually, we're going to end up selling this bed platform as a unit. Okay. It's got our electrical utilities and our water utilities. This bed platform has 20 gallons of water in it. Looks like we're about half full here. Actually, yeah, the submarine said 38%, so that's about right. Yeah. We got our electric hot water, four gallon. Oh, yeah, the can yeah, I like that. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. And you know, all PEX fittings. And then this here, drop this out. We've got a curtain that strings between the two doors here. Yep. And then this is our shower, transom shower. Boom. Well, I don't think the pump is on right now. But it's not, I think we turned it off. Yeah. yeah. But you can do your little shower, little navy shower here. We've got our trunk light back here. Wait, that was a light? That's a light, yep. Oh, look at that. Trunk light so you can see all your gear back here. Uh, one ten outlet because we have an e-bike that we want to charge on the road. So you personally have an e-bike? Yeah. And obviously the subwoofer because I do love my music. Who doesn't, right? <laughs> right. And then you, I know you're about to open this up. Yeah, yeah. This is this is our electrical cab. So we're about ninety percent done. We're still hooking up the the amplifier back there. You use a what size is it's your all, inverter? It's all high and tight. This is a twenty five hundred watt Ames inverter. Is this an inverter charger? Can you it charge? Is. Yeah, okay. Yep, it's an inverter charger. We've got shore power hidden. Oh, uh, it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Best yep. way to do I it. I don't like the shore power plugs. They always look ugly. So I try and hide them as much as possible. Yeah. And then in the back there, we've got two of our one hundred twenty amp hour batteries and they are positioned vertically because you can position them anyway. Your batteries had a built, you said it was a built-in BMS. Yeah. But you were talking about, I remember I had a friend over here that bought a couple batteries off of you. They had something else in there and I forget what it was now. Do you, do you remember what we were talking about? Something about uh, the DC to DC charger? Oh yeah, so these batteries, if you're, if you're running a Sprinter, you're able to charge these batteries direct off the alternator with a solenoid. So that's kind of what sets them apart. You can see here, we've got our ZAMP solar controller. Yeah. And this is just a simple 500 amp solenoid. So when your car is on, uh -huh. this is charging, it's off, it's not charging. And my guy came over earlier and he said, yep, we're charging at 130 amps. So So you don't need that Victron or Sterling DC to charger is what you're saying. Right. So these with your batteries. Bucks. Yeah. Cool. Now, the caveat is with the transit van, you can't do that because they have a smart alternator and it gets a little tricky. So, interesting. Sprinter, Promaster, totally fine. Older vehicles and transits, you got to use a DC DC charger. And I also advise if you are going to do something like that, please have somebody of professional that knows what they're doing to install that because these guys know what they're doing when it comes to wiring. Just the last couple things here we've got. Yeah, please. Fire extinguisher in the back and a little uh, hook oh, there, hook. Yeah. which is for your, your dish rag. So you're right there in the sink, you got your dish rag right underneath the bed. When you were out at campsites, because uh -huh. uh, you said you, you took this out testing it, did you, after you were done with the sleeping quarters, did you put the bed up? 
you and know, we had it down most of the time because we had a whole bunch of stuff in here. Did you? Yeah. We had two inflatable paddle boards and like a whole bunch of camp gear and a grill and all that good stuff. You just felt it was just easier to keep it down. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. For though. the most part, you'll keep it down. You can fold it up. And then we're going to have some L-Track here and here. So you can L tracks are these guys right here. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, you're fine. And so we're gonna be able to load in a motorcycle. Okay, and you can hook it to the L track. Flip the whole thing up, load the motorcycle in, hook it to the L track, and drive away. Motorcycles are usually about you know 46 inches tall. Yeah, yeah. Higher than most most people's beds. That's beautiful. You got flares in this? We do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, From Flare Space, space or whatever? Yeah. You even got some little cubbies. I don't know if you can see that up yeah, there. Yeah, I'm gonna get some B-roll of that. Are you a Flare Space installer? I am, yeah. Okay, cool, you're a certified yep. installer. And we're actually gonna be setting up a space here so that we can specifically be installing windows, flare space, fans, just keep them coming. Oh, so really? We'll do partial builds for that. Oh, nice. Yep. Here we've got our drop-down table. Um, also, Shisugi Bon bamboo, and nice and sturdy airline cable. Yeah, that cable was not seen when you had it up. Yep. Nice. And that just feeds in behind the fridge, so. I like it. And we put the fridge at the door here so that you can still get your... Put your fridge. I'm gonna step in so I can see yeah. this. So you can still get your beer from outside. <laughs> or kombucha. <laughs> well, I like that because that's exactly how Ghost was set up. Yeah, kombucha or... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I want to, I could plug how Kombucha Town is now a sponsor, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with this, he... Well, who used the... Uh, who's your yeah. upper cab uh, shelf here? Yeah, we use Shuxan. Um, they're up out of Bellingham, Washington, and they make some great products out of aluminum. We also are going to install their slide out bike tray in the back. Okay. So we can keep our gear and our bikes in there. All right, yeah. awesome. Uh, before we get going, where can we find you yet again? Uh, you can find us at overlandvanproject.com or our Instagram, Overland Van Project. Thank you. And uh, you do full builds, you do, uh, you help out anybody that wants just kits or? Yep, we do full builds. Right now we are almost done with our wall panel kit. It'll install just with rib nuts. Okay. Um, in the stock openings, or in the stock holes. And then we also do partial builds as far as windows, flares, roof vents go. Uh, yeah, you've actually done a lot of window yeah. installments, Lots right? Of windows, Lots of windows. And, and we're going to be doing uh, roof racks and exterior accessories as well. And everybody, they can just order everything from you and you can just install it for them if needed. Yeah. That's awesome. What about like uh, the, the, the running boards? Yep, we can do running boards. Once, you guys do it all, man. Once Amp Research is able to do the automatic ones on the 2019 Plus, then we'll <laughs> be doing that too. Uh, right now we're just doing the uh, fixed ones. Very nice. If you want to look at one more thing. Jeez, man. I'm, I'm, I hate to keep on asking. You're busy here. No, I love it. You want to check out the roof. I really like how it's all integrated in. Oh, trust me. There's going to be some B-roll of that. Okay, good. Yeah, right, don't so. worry about that. So guys, if you guys want to check out uh, Dustin and his whole team, how many? You got a lot of guys. So I'm going to shoot your, uh, shout out your crew here. Yeah, but by the end of, end of this month, we'll be at 12 full-time employees. 12 full-time employees. So you're yep. keeping guys employed during all the hard times. I appreciate that. Yep. But anyways, uh, during, all, during all this tough time, uh, you know, Dustin's keeping it real. Dude, great, man. I love, love, love this van. Fantastic color, by the way. Not your standardized white. So yeah. awesome. Good job, man. Again, guys, find this guy, overlandvanproject.com, OVP. OVP. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the shirt. A 2021, you're going to be going into some expos. You're going to be bringing this rig with you, right? Yeah, we're going to try and be at Overland West. Um, we'll be at all the Adventure Van Expos. Yep. And yeah, see come, us there. Come see us. Or come see him. I'll be there. but uh, <laughs> And then, you guys can't see it, but it, where are you right there? That's Thank coming you. soon. That's coming soon. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's that guy right there. That's the Stuart and Stevenson, right? That's I'm calling you out on it, man. You're, it. you're getting it done. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's a whole new... It's a whole new project. Here. You have to get it done. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So we're going to, next time you guys will see Dustin on my channel, will be a tour of whatever I want to call that thing. <laughs> the military badassery. Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Later.